So if you've ever wondered how people record their Xbox or PlayStation gameplay and post it on YouTube or games like Call of Duty or Battlefield or Minecraft, well this tutorial is going to be great for you. Today we're going to go over how to set up the Elgato HD60S capture card and all the equipment you need, how the software works, and how to edit inside the software. So let's just jump right in. For this part of the tutorial we are going to be going over everything you need to record your gameplay on your PlayStation 4. The first thing you are going to need is your Elgato HD60S. The second thing you are going to need are two HDMI cables. One is going to be included in your Elgato game capture box, and the other is already going to be used for your system, connecting from your PlayStation to your TV or monitor. The third thing you are going to need is a USB Type-C cable. That will be included in the Elgato packaging. The fourth thing you are going to need is your console of choice, and for this example, we will be using the PlayStation 4. The fifth thing you will need is a computer capable of running the Elgato software, and the recommended computer specifications are on Elgato's help website. And the most important part about using the computer is that you need to make sure it has a USB 3.0 port. That is what separates it between the Elgato HD60 and the HD60S. Now for this part of the tutorial, what we're going to be doing is connecting your HD60S to your PS4 and your PC. So what you're going to do first is take one end of the HDMI cable and plug it into the in port on the HD60S, then take the other side of the HDMI cable and plug it into your PS4 system. Next what you're going to want to do is take the Type-C end of the USB and plug it into the Type-C port of the Elgato HD60S. Then from there what you're going to want to do is plug in the USB into your computer's USB 3.0 port. From here now what you're going to do is take the other HDMI cable and plug it into the output port of your HD60S. From there what you're going to do is take the other end of that HDMI cable and plug it into an HDMI port onto your TV. Alright so whenever you boot up your PlayStation 4 you're going to be in the cross media menu and what you're going to want to do is go up to the top section, you're going to come all the way to settings in between trophies and power and then you're going to scroll all the way down to see system, second from the last option and then you're going to disable HDCP so make sure the box is unchecked and whenever this happens, you cannot use Spotify, YouTube, Netflix, just to prevent copyright issues. But if you ever want to reuse it, just recheck the box, just so you know you will not be able to record whenever it is checked. And then once you have done this, we can move on to our next step. Alright, so in this step, I'm gonna just going to show you how to set up the Elgato software so that you can start recording your games. Um, make sure for the best way to do this that your USB Type-C cable is connected to your computer, my PC or Mac, and make sure, obviously, you have the software installed, and make sure your PlayStation is on so you can also see the screen right back here so it's best to see the quality. Alright, so obviously the first step that you want to do is make sure that you have your Elgato software up and running. So just open it up from the desktop wherever you saved it at. Then you are going to go over to device you're going to press on the gear icon right here the show device settings you got to click that and then this box is going to pop up for most of this you're just going to want to stay in the capture tab for your input device you want to make sure that it is set to playstation 4 if you're recording on xbox one wii u nintendo switch anything you could just switch it to that but for this we're doing playstation 4. your video input is obviously just going to stay hdmi your audio input, I keep it HDMI audio, that's just the best way to go about it. HDMI color range, I keep it on expanded. There's really no reason for that, I just I, don't, I just kind of have it on there. The profile and the allow 60 FPS are the most important parts for recording quality, so my computer can only handle 720. As you see, if I try to click on 1080, it gives me a warning saying my computer isn't powerful enough and it will create a lot of lag. So I keep it at 720, and you can see right here as soon as you change it. The screen will pop back up and it edits and so I recorded 720 if you can handle it do 1080 and then allow 60 frames per second that's the best way to go about it just for the smoothest gameplay for quality I usually slide it right to best and for cropping I you have it set at none if you're using a PlayStation VR headset to record your games that's what you want to switch it to but since you're probably gonna mostly be recording Call of Duty, Witcher 3, South Park you're going to want to have that none. 
And then for allow 60 FPS for video preview, I have it unchecked just because it can slow down your computer. Just you don't really need it on. There's no real reason to. And then convert standard definition to uh, 640 by 480. I usually have it checked. There's no. It doesn't really matter that much when you put it in your editing software. It's still gonna export to 720p. And then stretch standard definition input. I just kind of leave it at the default of checked. And then for picture audio and profiles I don't really mess with anything they just brightness contrast saturation the audio you can just change the audio gain and the profiles you can have like a set profile so all these things will be changed or saved but I only the only we're gonna need right now is just the capture tab so after that you can just close right out and now once you have all that done you're done with the capture tab and then feel free to just mess around with the other settings if you see fit but for right now we have the setup as far as quality done so for this next step of the video, I'm going to show how you record the gameplay. So as you can see right now, I'm in the PlayStation Store menu. But one of the first things you're going to want to do is right here at Game Audio, you're going to want to adjust this to whatever your preference is. I usually put it at 71. And then if you plan on recording your own voice, like which I'm doing right now, you want to have a microphone such as a Blue Snowball. In the live commentary section, you're going to select the microphone, Blue Snowball. And then right here is the is how loud you will sound. So I have it at 62, but that's preference to how loud you talk, how quiet. I usually talk kind of loud, so I have it at 62. And you want to make sure you balance this between game audio and live commentary because you don't want to sound too quiet compared to the game, but you don't want to sound too loud compared to the game. It's all about how you prefer to make your video. Now right here, you're going to go into video title. This is just what it's going to export as so the video title so the video will be um, PS store so we're because we're in the PlayStation store and then for the game we can just type in PlayStation and then for the description you can type whatever you want this is more for if you're uploading it straight to YouTube but no matter what you need a video type title and a game so your end video description you can type in um, tutorial and then for tags, you can type in tutorial as well, or PS Store, whatever you prefer. Now, before you start recording, you're going to want to go to commentary. You're going to press the blue icon right here. And as you can see, this is when you know your voice is being picked up. You can see the mic levels just bouncing back and forth. And then finally, to start your recording, you're just going to hit the red button right here to record. And then to stop recording, of course, you just re-click the button as well. Okay, so the final part of this video is going to finalize everything you have done so far and how to upload the video and edit it. So to stop the recording, you're just going to hit the record button again, stop the recording, and then it will save. So you're, after that, you're going to go right to the edit tab. And then from here, you're going to see all the folders right here, COD World War II, Fortnite, Overwatch, PS4, Tutorial, etc. Now what's interesting is that these names right here resemble the game that you typed in right here so you can see playstation video titles ps store if you go back to edit you see playstation when you click there you see ps store that is the five second clip i recorded earlier as one of the methods so then but for this we're going to go to cod world war 2 because we're going to edit the intro that you saw in the beginning of the video so what we're going to do from here is i'm going to show you right here we're gonna to go to a minute 50 because that's where the intro took place so right here all right so this is the start of the video now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna zoom out of this a bit so to do that we're gonna hit right here on the minus to zoom in you hit the plus right here okay now what we're going to do is we are going to snip it with the scissor tool right here and then we're just gonna zoom up a little bit I'll say about right here and then hit the scissor tool again now to get rid of all these well, what this did is that it cut these off into sections so that we can delete these so to do that we're gonna click this and then click the trash can right here and then we're gonna click the other section press the trash can right here now when doing this we have a 40 second clip uh, we just have the intro from the beginning as you saw before I showed all the equipment that you need so some of the other parts right here is that we can go to the beginning of the clip with this we can rewind play fast forward take screenshots and mute the game audio <clears throat> 
Also right here we can rename it. So if we wanted to change it to montage intro, we can do that right there. Or what you can do is you can click this little I button right here. You can edit the video title, title edit the game title, the game level, configuration. You can do the description. So right here we have gameplay and then the tags, intro, Ogato. You can also set what is currently right here as the thumbnail. So to do that, you press set thumbnail. As you can see, the image is right here and also right here. Now you're gonna press the I again to get rid of that window. Now after me, you make a bunch of edits, what you're going to wanna do is you're gonna share it. Now if you come over here, you can see a whole bunch of different share options. You have YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, your email, Apple TV, iPad, iPhone, Movie Maker, or an MP4 file. What I usually do is I export it as an MP4 file since I don't really use Elgato that much for editing. I prefer a little bit more complicated but more some ways efficient way of editing, which is Adobe Premiere. So you can see right here there's a whole bunch of different options. You can do this actually the video I'm currently working on right now. There's all these little videos you can add to this. Assembly, editing, color effects, audio graphics, libraries. A whole bunch more windows you can style your videos add music add transitions everything that you would need but Elgato is more for the beginning user which is just a more simplistic way of editing so after you cut the video what you might want in the end is still the entire video but now you have a problem because you just deleted a whole bunch of the video so what you're going to do is you're going to right click this right here and then you're gonna hit restore original video and now see we're back to 7 minutes 55 seconds see right here 2 out of two minutes 5 seconds out of the 7 minutes and 55 seconds now what's an interesting thing you can do is that you can right click this and you can hit save game audio only which is really nice so if there was commentary over but you don't want the commentary anymore you can hit save game audio only so then it will just erase that whole thing which is something to my knowledge that you cannot do in Elgato because it kind of morphs everything into one audio file. You can also save live commentary only, save game capture audio only, save webcam video only, and then restore the original and you can also zoom in, zoom out, take screenshots, split the segments, but I just prefer to use the scissor tool because I feel it's an easier way to do so. And then at, so after you have the video that you wanted, you're going to, so I'll hit control Z and I'll get that back. So what you might want to do is you're going to hit share on YouTube. And then before this screen pops up, for the first time user, it's going to have you link your YouTube account to your Elgato so it's easier and more efficient. You don't have to do it every single time. And so for your account, mine is Mr. Dr. D, that's just my YouTube channel. And then there is the gaming category, but there's also film, how to. So actually, it's kind of like this video um, nonprofits, news, pets, everything. And then there's also the title for the YouTube video, the description, and the tags for it as well. And then you can make the movie private, yes or no. I have it as yes. And then after that, you hit upload. And then after that, you are completely done. You have made your first YouTube video, and now you know everything about the software, all the equipment you need, all the optional equipment like the Blue Snowball microphones. And now you can continue to make YouTube videos for yourself and for the people who will watch it. So I hope this tutorial has helped for you, and I hope to see your videos on YouTube in the future. Have a great day.